Waivers to fly at night are gone for good. That's right. Yes, you heard me right. Daytime waivers to fly at night are gone for good. Now, we talked to a lot of clients over the past couple months and through different subjects of conversation, waivers always seem to come up and talking about daytime waivers to be able to fly at night under part 107 come up frequently. And I thought this is a long overdue video that I have to make because they are no longer valid. They are a thing of the past. In March of this year, 2021, the FAA revitalized Part 107. Among them are the daytime waivers. They are gone for good. So we have a different video out there that really updates all the new changes to Part 107 that you're gonna wanna check out. We're not gonna get into that in this video. We're just gonna talk about Part 107 in terms of daytime waivers for flying at night. Now, it's always been a very difficult process to be able to get that application. The FAA's application process for that's always been very problematic. They wanted a lot of things out of a drone operator for that application, and a lot of people actually got rejected. So, now, the good news is that process is a lot easier to be able to fly at night, but it's not through a daytime waiver anymore. So you'll see again, in our other video that we talk about in part 107, the changes in part 107, and that test requirements is the recurrency. There is no more recurrent test. Now they offer further education through the FAA portal website. Now, what you can do is at any point, if, as long as you have part 107, you can just go ahead, take a two hour training course and answer a very simple test. Everybody that I have talked to and I've actually taken it myself, finds that test fairly easy to do. And now they want you to be able to have 100% on the test, but if you get one wrong, you can simply just keep taking the questions until you get it right. So it's a lot easier to be able to do this now than it used to be. Now, a lot of public safety might be saying, well, that doesn't apply to us. We are exempt from that, right? No, it's not. Because if you are flying under Part 107 for your agency and not necessarily under your certificate of authorization or your agency does not have a certificate of authorization, then this is going to be required for you to go through this training process for under 107. So I hope this really helps spell a lot of those uh, mess out there and misconceptions about some of the rules and policies, some of the changes that are out there. If you have any questions, please feel free, write them down on the uh, comment section below. We'll be glad to talk to them or simply just contact us again. We really do, our, we're a one-stop shop for public safety going through this entire process and through our program development that we help public safety for. We'll be glad to help you out. So until next time, we'll talk to you soon.